Yes, guess who's back? It's Melissa from Love Live, Love During Lockup. And guess who's with me? My Louie. And we are stronger than ever. You all said it wouldn't last. Meanwhile, I got my two carrots. I got my two carrots. You horse can never. The only carrot you will ever get is from the grocery store. Now see, all that stalking in high school paid off, horse, and I got my Louie. So for all you haters and naysayers that said it wouldn't last, go choke on a cannoli while I go choke on my Louie's cannoli. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Sass here, and I'm here for the recap of life after lockup child. What did y'all think? Honey, I tried to pull off Melissa, but honey, this buy one, get one free hair. Honey, it was a time, let me tell you. <laughs> Y'all, this ain't for me, these wigs. Ah. They are tearing my nerves up, cha cha, all up in my hair, sticking old things. Come on, middle part, bust down. <laughs> Anyway, yes, yes, Melissa and Louie are back. And then you know what? I'm glad to see them. I am actually glad to see these two. And can I just say that Louie looks healthy and he's doing very well for himself. I am so happy for Louie. And you know what? If Melissa makes him happy, so be it. Okay? Because y'all know Melissa can be a lot. She can be a lot, but they going strong. Okay? Louie, honey, baby, he got him a job, child. He's working down there at that good old pizzeria. Okay? And he work at a smoothie shop. And he's a personal trainer. And he's a salesman. How can you not like Louie? And can I just say this? Did he get his teeth redone? His mouth looks good. It looks better. Louie looks, Louis looks good. I am so happy for him. Well, him and Melissa are hanging strong. And Melissa said, listen, I want to get married. So she says, I'm ready to get married. I'm ready for us to be one. And you know, I want my two cowards. I said two carrots. I was like, oh, okay. And so he was like, listen here, okay? I can't be, you know, buying you two carrots. I'm saving up. It's going to take me a minute. But what Melissa wants, Melissa shall receive, okay? Because Melissa said that she's worth it, all right? That she's worth it, that she need them two cowards. And she want everybody to see that ring from the sky. Okay? She want that ring to cut glass. Do you hear me? So her and Louie had went to the ocean because he wanted to go on one of those, those uh, water plunges in like 30 degree weather. I don't even know why people want to do that, child. So Louie done ran out there and honey, it was too much for him. Honey. He said, I can't do it. <laughs> I cannot do it, child. So... He's talking to his mom, all right, and he's telling his mom, he says, listen, I am proposing to Melissa. And the mom was like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my Lord. And so he was like, yes, I'm going to get her ring. I love Melissa. She is the one for me. And um, I'm going to give her, you know, two carrots. And so the his mom was like, what? She said, you got it like that? You got two, you got enough money to, to get this woman two carrots. And he was like, yeah, I mean, it's going to cost me ten to $12,000. And she says, what? Do you have ten to $12,000 to be spending on a 
ring for her? And honey, Louis, with his whole chest, he was so confident. He was so proud of himself. He says, I sure do. I said, I ain't even mad at you. I ain't even mad at Louis. Louis done worked his butt off. He done saved up some money, and he's going to spend it all on Melissa and this two carat ring. Melissa, don't you blow this. Because I legitimately think that Louie loves you. All right? And he is working his butt off to make you happy. Don't blow this. Because Louie seems like he really is a good dude. Melissa, you don't know how lucky you got it, child. He out here. That's Melissa, and that is Louie, and uh, it was good seeing him. Now, I'm going to take off his wig, child. Oh, child. Oh, God. Woo! Yes, Lord. Yeah. Woo! Da la 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 Look at this. Bust down. And how many inches is that, child? How many inches is that, child? I can't be wearing it. Oh, God. It got in my eye. Ooh, ooh, let me put this right here. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ooh. Let's move on. Rob and Teeny. <laughs> well, the party's over. <laughs> Honey, them folks don't win up. Into that venue and cut a shine, child. They done tore up the venue. They done knocked over tables, chairs, cups, glasses, plates. Honey, they done tore that place apart. So, as we know, Mama Rob and Teeny done got into the fisticuffs. Now, you can look at it at, uh, in all scenarios, okay? In my opinion, should Teeny have walked off and stayed gone? Yes. Yes, she should have. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. That's not what she did. Mama Rob had a slick comment. Teeny said, what you gonna do about it? Space and opportunity. But see, this is the thing. Mama Rob walked in there, in that party, with an agenda. Fresh blowout. I said that. She knew that she was going to get up in there. Maybe not fight, but she knew she was going to get up in there and um, get underneath teeny skin. And that's exactly what happened. But Mama Rob, you did that, first of all, in front of your son, which is his welcome home party, and in front of those kids. And there was a better way to handle that. You know what that way was? Handled it like a mother should, okay? You and Teddy had no business up in their fight, period. So, anyway, they everybody was separated, okay? Everybody was mad, all right? Teeny done got to cry. And did you see the little girl? Oh, I just felt so bad for her kids because they ain't seen nothing like that before. And they ain't never seen their mama fight like that. So, you know, that was just a terrible thing. And y'all, I got a question. Where did Mama Teeny go? <laughs> Mama Teeny said, let me get off this camera, child. Child, they done raised my blood pressure, child. <laughs> we didn't see Mama Teeny no more. But we see Mama Rob. And Mama Rob is still running that mouth. Calling Teeny all kinds of B words. All kinds of whores. And then she done said, Mama Rob called Teeny a dusty ass bitch. I said, not the dab. Not D-A-B. Just raw. It ain't nothing about teeny dusty, okay? 
You just mad and you embarrassed and you should be, Mama Rob. So then she's up in the elevator. She is going off. She's still cursing. She talking about she done beat her ass. It was just a mess. It was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. So then she says, without my son, she wouldn't have nothing. See, it always comes back to material things. It always comes back to money. Okay? Then she calls Teeny the effing, gremlin, goblin hoe. <laughs> Not a gremlin, goblin hoe. So I'm sitting back and I was like, you know what? This cannot be what I think it is. It really is materialistic. You're jealous, Mama Rob. You're upset because Teeny is a stay-at-home mom and Rob is taking care of her. He took care of her very well while he was in prison. Well, see, now he got him a regular schmeckler job. He ain't gambling. And so he has to dial down a little bit. Which means he can't take care of you. He can't help you. Or your, or his siblings. Or other family members. You're going to have to do it on your own. Okay? This is your son. This is not your ATM, Mama Rob. You're wrong for that. So then as she's going outside, uh, Rob is trying to follow her. Trying to talk to her. And then when I see that Ford Fiesta. Is that what that was, y'all? That Ford Fiesta hatchback that was leaned to the left. Did y'all see the dent in the back? I said, oh, that's why she mad. She barely made it there. <laughs> you see what Rob did was drive. And she driving her a Ford Fiesta with a dent in the back. Okay, you know, was there some leaking? <laughs> Y'all, I'm joking. I am joking. There was nothing wrong with that car. I am strictly joking. But anyway, I'm not joking about why Mama Rob is upset. I think that she is jealous. And I think that she is upset because Rob is taking care of... Um, of teeny and um she's just not reaping the benefits that she had before so they get home and rob <laughs> strong shout out okay strong shout out to rob on how he handled those children he was caring he was loving he was kind he was understanding he made sure that they felt safe okay he says, I am so sorry that you had to witness that. And I said, you better go on, Rob. I was like, okay. All right, check for Rob. That was really, really, really mature how he handled those children. And so him and Teeny had a conversation. And he was like, listen, I can't even believe what you did. She said, what did I do? He said, why you get up in her face like that? And she said, she the one that had them slick comment. She had no business coming up in there. Okay? So, she had a slick comment. I said what I got to say. And it was fisticuffs. And he was like, no, that, that ain't even right. Okay? Because, see, now, Mama Rob and Teeny, Teeny said, I'm done with her. Teeny said, now let me tell you something. I'm not going to stop you from having a relationship with your mother. But your mother... And I are done. Okay? He was like, well, what do you want me? He, she said, quit inviting her to things. Quit inviting her. She don't know how to act. So, when she don't know how to act, I ain't gonna know how to act. Okay? You're up there on the rooftop. You could have fell off. And so she said, from this day forward, I don't want to have nothing to do with that woman. And so, listen, how you go, y'all done hit each other upside the head. 
rolling all over each other. How you going to come back from that? There's already animosity, hurt feelings. Honey, y'all need to stay away from each other if it's going to lead to this. And side note, how mature was Teeny's kids when they were talking about the situation? They sounded like two adults. I said, y'all been... I love her kids. I love her children. The maturity that these two kids have is unreal. Teeny, you did good, girl. You did real good. Okay? Real, real good, good, good raising, honey. So anyway, so there's Rob. Rob's feelings is hurt. He done got a little teary-eyed. And he says that he just feels like he's being pulled in two different directions. And then he says, listen, no one showed up at my party. I said, oh, I feel bad for Rob. Rob said no family showed up. It was my welcome home party. My mama and my wife done, done beat each other's ass. He says, oh, I feel bad. I did. I felt bad for Rob. Rob, it's all right. You're going to bounce back. It's going to be okay. Child, you got Teeny, you got the kids, and I guess you still got your mama, child. Just don't invite her to any more stuff. Okay? You go visit her solo dolo. That's what you do. Child, let's move on. Rock and Brittany. <laughs> Key Rock, honey, your mama was not here for it. <laughs> Honey, Mama Key Rock said, get them cameras out my face. That's what she said. She said, don't you put them cameras on my face. I said, oh, honey, I ain't never seen the cameraman move so fast. <laughs> honey, they was out the door. She said, if you don't get up out my face, you better. So we have Key Rock. Key Rock's plan was to move the tits. Instead of Key Rock waiting for approval from Texas, he went ahead and made all these plans and moving trucks and moving out of houses. He don't quit his job, chat. Just for Texas to say, uh-uh, <laughs> not today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. We'll see. But see, while Key Rock was doing all that, his mom is part of this plan. His brothers is part of this plan. I said, oh, Key Rock. So him and Brittany have nowhere to go. So in the state of Virginia, they will give you some type of assistance, okay? They will put you up in the hotel. Now, let me tell you something. It ain't going to be no five-star. <laughs> it ain't going to be no three-star. It may be a one. But that's where you're going to lay your head for a while. And so Brittany was like, this is triggering because, you know, when she was homeless, she stayed in those kinds of hotel motels, not the Holiday Inn job. Okay. And so she hates it. She says, I hate going back there, you know, in this type of neighborhood. She says, I've been there, done it, hated it. And it also reminded her of being back in prison. Brittany and Kirok, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about Sass, honey. I have been in some of those hotel motels, not the Holiday Inn, okay? Child, when I tell you I was at a, a motel, child, it was called The Inn. Not The End, but The Inn, child. And honey, my stupid self was up in there. I was about 19, 20 years old. Acting grown. And I'm going to leave it at that. Child, I seen, you know, ladies of the night walking up and down the street, child, in good old Virginia. I said, oh my God. See, that was the first time I had ever seen a lady of the night. And that was the very first time I had ever seen a street pharmacist do his job. I said, what is going on? Now, like I said, I was up in there trying to be grown, minding my business. Knock on the door. They had knocked so hard on that door, honey, the door came open. I said, uh-uh, not the, not the 
busted lock. Child, they done went down there at that maintenance department over there at the end. And they done put that door back together with Elmer's glue and a prayer. I said, uh-uh, I got to get up out of here. So the person who I was with when I was trying to be grown, he was like, if you don't get your ass up out of here, you going to be limping out of here. What's wrong with you? Well, this is when I first heard the term crackhead. In real life. Child, when I tell you this person, blessed be thy name, honey. <laughs> honey, it look like he ate a box of donuts. A pound of donuts. Ah! Honey, this eye went that way. This eye went down here. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Lord, look after me. Ha! Honey, when I tell you, it was time for me to go. So, anyway, Keyron, Brittany, I get it. Okay? But, hey, these are the cards that was dealt to you. Keyron done got himself in a whole child. He got two problems, okay? One is Mama Keyron because he has yet to tell her about they are not going to Texas. And he was like, man, she is going to erupt. She is going to be so mad, as she should. You should have known better. You should have been done told her. So now you're going to get cussed out. Oh, well. You're going to get cussed out. You might as well take it. But then he has to get the financial, you know, situation under control. So he calls the leasing office. And he was very perfect. Key Rock, I am so Rooting for Key Rock and Britney. Let me tell you why. Key Rock is standing on everything that he has said that he was going to do when he got out of prison. He got him a job. He's been working. He's been saving. Okay? And he's been doing really well for himself. Him and Britney. Side note. Britney! Honey, y'all better leave Britney alone about her confessional child. Honey, Britney's confessionals is on point. Did you see the little ponytail and the little baby hair side swoop? And then she had that little bang, a lang a lang. I said, you better stop. <laughs> Britney said, y'all ain't gonna be talking about me. She looked good. Her and Key Rock looks good together. So... The leasing office was like, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to give you back your money, your deposit, your first month's rent, all that. And Key Rock did not yell, did not scream, did not throw a fit. He was like, dang, I appreciate you. And I said, look at the maturity. I said, look at Key Rock. Honey, some of these other participants would have tore that place apart. So anyway, it's time to tell Mama Key Rock. And honey, how about when Key Rock looked at Brittany and said, Listen, you got my back when Mama Key Rock cussed me out. Hey, Brittany said, No. Don't you see I'm doing my baby hair? <laughs> see, you made this. Look, look, you're going to get cussed out. I ain't going to say nothing. My name Benny. You see my swoop? I got things to do. <laughs> Brittany said, If you don't get up out of my face. <laughs> they tickled me. I think Brittany said with the quitness, hell no. That cussing is coming for you. So it's time. It was minutes. Okay. Mama Key Rock is pissed. She is stressed. Okay. She done ran the camera people out that house. The cat is just going back and forth. Honey, the cat didn't know what to do. So then here we go. Key Rock tells his brother. His brother was like, <clears throat> he said, yeah, you're about to get cussed out. What is wrong with you? And Key Rock was like, I know, I know. So here, Mama Key Rock loaded up this U-Haul. All of them are out there. It was day when Key Rock them was there. Then it done turned to night. Brittany over there in the cut like is. <laughs> and then Mama Key Rock said, let's go. She said, woo, we going to Texas. We going to Texas. And then Key Rock was like, eh, not so fast. I got something to tell you. She was like, what? Y'all see his brother. His brother was like, here we go. Now 
I done told this Negro that he should have been done told mama, but he out here cutting the shot. All right, well, here we go. We ain't going to Texas. Texas did not approve of us to go. So we're not going. You're going to have to go. And I said, oh, Lord. Mama Kirok said, now, nah, I know. I know you lie. She said, are you effing kidding me? Child, did you see Mama Kira's wig shift? I said, Kira, just go on in the car. <laughs> just, just go on in the car, honey. That wig shifted. And I said, just get on in the car. Brittany, get on in the car. Get on. And honey, Mama Kira proceed to lay Kira out. Kira didn't have nothing to say. There's nothing he could say. You waited till the last minute to tell your mother that you were leaving. How do you think she was going to react? She mad. And she's mad as hell. Oh, God. That is going to be the longest drive to Texas. <laughs> and I bet you all the way up and down the highway, she was cussing Key Rock out. As she should. So then as they was leaving, she was like, get on out my face. She said, I done told you to get them cameras. Get them cameras out my face. Get them cameras Key Rock and Brittany are going to have to wait for approval. Meanwhile, they are at the hotel motel, not the Holiday Inn. Meanwhile, Mama Key Rock and his brother's on their way to Texas. This is just a mess. But Key Rock says he takes full responsibility and he feels so bad about what went down. Key Rock, it's going to work out. It's going to work. Jesus will work it out if you let Work it out, Jesus can work it out. Work it out while you're trying to figure it out. Yes, honey, that's old school. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Z and Troy, child. Troy don't walk, okay? All right, now I don't know if he walks six miles, but he don't walk. He's just cooling off, okay? Because he's still upset with Z because Z was not honest with him about the finances of the profit. Uh, of the nonprofit, well, of their job and of the rent of their apartment. So here is um, Z. Z done jumped in the car and she's riding around looking for Troy. Y'all, now Troy just walked out of the house. You know he couldn't have went far. So where are you driving, Z? <laughs> I was thinking, how far could he have went? That you're driving around the neighborhood and you didn't see him. Did you wait four hours? So Troy called his homeboy. What's the homeboy's name, y'all? What was did I write it down? What was his name? Trey. Trey been his homeboy since 11 years old. And Trey looked like somebody I could kick it with. <laughs> Trey, Trey seemed chill, laid back. He was high. Now, don't get it effed up. He was high. So was Troy. Y'all see them? They was just, is that what they was drink? Oh, is that what they was smoking, that ganja? I was like, so y'all just going to be smoking all out in the open? Is that what that was? Oh, okay. I, I, you know, it was a cigarette. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. But I think it was the... Hey. Okay. So Trey was just chill. Trey was like, what's up? And so here is Troy fussing about, you know, Z and her not being honest with him and blah, blah, blah. And Trey was like, you know, went through a lot. You good. Get down. Okay. You don't want to go back to prison. <laughs> it's Troy. Troy's like, no, nah, I'm good, man. So they had a nice conversation, okay? 101. He just needed to be talked down from the ledge from his homeboy. And guess what? His homeboy showed up for him. Can't be mad at it. Meanwhile, Z is back at the apartment. 
His homeboy done dropped him off. And so Z was like, where you been? I've been riding around here looking for you. What's wrong with you? And he was like, oh, Lord. He said, I needed to clear my head. She said, she said, he said, I needed to clear my head. And she said, what are you out there doing? You out there slinging? You trying to be back out there in these streets? You in the streets. You won't be with me. He was like, no. He was like, no. But what we have to do is figure out a, a solution to this mess that you did. And so here is Z. Z come talking about what is with you and leaving. Every time when we have a, an argument or a spat, you leave. You just go off and you just walk off like, you know, 12 years a slave. You just going around here walking, Kuta. <laughs> so he was like, because I needed to get out of the situation. Clear my head. Calm down. And so then, Z. Now I said, now Z, why did you even utter these words? She had the audacity to say, we have to communicate more. He has to communicate with me. Uh, Z, you were the one that didn't tell him about the financial mess you all are in. See, that was not communicating. <laughs> that was hiding. Okay, some very important information. So you can't be talking to him about him not communicating with you when you're not communicating with him. And he said that. He said, wait a minute, you're not communicating with me. And she was like, oh, well, uh, uh, uh. I was like, <laughs> girl, you need to stop. Both of you need to communicate with each other. And when it is as important as your job, your business, and your rent, communication better be on top tier, period. So anyway, they said that they sorry to each other. Kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy, even though she was like, don't, don't, don't. Okay, just a little, just a little. Did y'all see her pull away from him? I was like, what is happening here? So anyway, child, that is Z and Troy. Let's move on. Bianca and Daniel. All right. Bianca is still sitting there saying that she has done a lot for Daniel. And then what about when she looks at Daniel and said, what have you done for me? What have you done for me? And Daniel looks her and said, I've only been out a day. <laughs> I've, I've literally been out one day. And Bianca was like, whatever. A day? You know how that's 24 hours. Shit. I could have a lot in a day. <laughs> he said, I made your breakfast. She said, you made me breakfast, but you didn't go get me no coffee. One plus one don't equal two. <laughs> Daniel said, I ain't gonna be too many more of those. Now I ain't gonna be too many more. You can you bring up that coffee again and see what happened. Now I'm sick and tired of it. <laughs> Y'all, I like Daniel. I do. <clears throat> Daniel, right now. And you know what? Him and Bianca tickle me together, child. So anyway, <clears throat> it's time to see his P.O. Because his P.O. has to approve of him staying with Bianca. So they went to go see the P.O. The P.O. says, oh yeah, it's all good. So now Daniel can stay with Bianca. But see, they got bigger fish to fry. I'm going to need for you, Daniel, a 31-year-old man who has a 13-year-old child to use protection. You are too grown to be sitting in that car talking about you don't want to have no kids with Bianca right now when you're doing it wrong. Condoms, condoms, condoms. And if you don't want to wear a condom, then I suggest you get yourself under control so you won't have a accident twice. 
Because, see, it's all good with Bianca. <laughs> Bianca said, I want kids, okay? I want a child now, okay? If I have to walk around here bow-legged for the next two years, then so be it. Legs in the air and wave them <laughs> like you just don't care. Keep on having accidents. You're going to have a youngin running around here. And then your face is going to be all squashed up. Talk about how that happened. You're too grown to be sitting up in that car. 31 years old talking about, you can't be having kids, but. So here's Bianca. Bianca was like, well. Well, what are we going to do? So then he wants her to take the plan B. She said, I don't want to do that. I want kids. <laughs> like, I want to get married. I want to have children. Like, what are you not understanding? This is what he was like. No, we ain't ready to have children yet. Okay, I do not want no kids right now. I have a child. We need to wait. She said, well. Get yourself together. Then he said, you need to be on plan B or get to plan B. She says, I don't want to take that. So, I said, Lord, have mercy. Child, what if Bianca end up pregnant, child? Could that be one way she'll stop drinking? Bianca and that is Daniel. Let's move on. Last and most definitely least, Justine and Michael Joe. The whole tribe is up in that house. <laughs> they got a whole football team up in that house, child. Honey, kids was everywhere trying to get ready for school. Justine is like, grab a pop top. I ain't making no pancakes, no bacon, no eggs. You better get you a bowl of cereal. She got the baby on her hip, honey. How beautiful is that baby? Oh, my God. She looked like a baby doll. The little body on her head. I was like, oh, she's adorable. She's, she's beautiful. But the whole family is good looking. So the kids are running around, getting this, getting that, you know, saying bye out the door. Then here is Michael. Michael is out the door. You know, going to his job, and here's Justine like, oh, God, thank God. Okay? And she says that, you know, she's happy being a mother. Well, she's happy having a baby, you know, in the house. And, you know, she's feeling okay with it. Because not only do she have Manhattan, okay? Is that the baby's name, Manhattan? Or is it Long Island? that baby's name, y'all? Brooklyn? What's the baby's name? Is the baby's name Poughkeepsie? What's that baby's name? <laughs> I'm joking, y'all. I know it's Manhattan. So she's feeding Manhattan and, oh, just so cute. So anyway, um, ain't that the baby's name? Yeah, that's the baby's name. So anyway, she's pregnant. It's a high-risk pregnancy. Okay, she's worried about that. And Michael flat out says no to a vasectomy. He said, you ain't going to be chipping away my manhood. I was like, Michael, shut up. Here your wife is, okay, your wife, who the doctor has already said, this is a high-risk pregnancy. She does not need... To get pregnant again, y'all need to think about this. Even if she have her tubes tied, she, I mean, it's just a whole lot of complications, okay? You was over at cross not flying about what if she passes away. Oh, but you can't even give a little bit and, and have a vasectomy. You got nine kids. Well, four, five. And then here you are. No, no, no. And he was like, I'm team balls. I'm team balls. I'm like, Michael. Justine was like, what about me? What about the risk I'm in? Okay, you, you ain't got no risk. 
Okay, they just gonna do a little snip snip. He was like, you don't know that. What if so? What if I can't use it anymore? You used it enough. You used it enough. Okay? The Lord has blessed y'all with a football team. So here Michael is, Montana Mills. Why don't you make a rap song called Vasectomy? That's what you did. So he is adamant. He said, absolutely not. You know, he ain't gonna go snip snip. You know, what if he can't use it? Oh, this bunch of bullshit. So anyway, he's on his way to work because he needed to get a job. Because see, his rap career, honey, stop. Okay? Just stop it. It ain't working. So you needed to go ahead and get you a nine to five. And then he kept talking about, oh yes, you know, um, the, the other rappers are looking at me talking about, that's it, bro. That's it. What about your rap? You just going to do a nine to five? And he said that he feels bad. Who cares? Who, who are these rappers that you're talking about that's trying to give you grief because you're trying to take care of your family? Fuck them. And you know what? Something else, Michael. Okay. Who, oh, are you over there talking to Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Eminem? Who you talking to? Drake? Cole? Side note, Cole's new song? Ooh, mm, come on, Jay, Cole. Mm, mm. <laughs> Y'all know he's a North Carolina boy. But anyway, let me move on. You do what you need to do and you take care of your family and screw what everybody else got to say. You got nine mouths to feed. So he goes to work. Um, Justine is out and about with, with Manhattan. That's the only really, you know, thing she can do is run errands when the kids are at school and her and Manhattan can have a good old time. She gets a phone call from Santana, her son. And honey, he's just having a fit. Some done went down at the house. She's trying to get to the house. Michael done been called on his job. Michael had to leave his job. So both of them gets home. And I said, oh my God. So Santana, which is Justine's son. Michael, which is of course Michael's son, done got into a fight. Because see, when you got all those people underneath a roof, Listen, it's going to be fussing and fighting now. You know, you don't want it to become physical. You know, who wants to fight their brother or their sister, okay? Step or not. This is still family. You don't want to see your family fight. But it just may happen, okay? This is a blended family. You know, it's a whole lot of people there. Michael's son just come to stay with them a couple of months ago. So, I'm sure there may be some jealousy there and just boys. And I, I really don't like this term, boys being boys. But in this case, it was, you know, the boys being boys. So, they're trying to question what is going on. So, of course, Santana says that Michael has been bullying him. Okay. So, it was some words back and forth about the mama and the daddy. And it was just a mess. So, Santana done threw his phone. And broke it. And so Michael said, your $1,500 phone. I said, damn. How old is that child? The guy the 15. I don't have a $1,500 phone. I don't have a $500 phone. I don't have a $200 phone, y'all. Do you hear what I'm saying? So this child has a $1,500 phone? Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, he done broke it. And so, he says that Michael Jr. took his phone, hid it in the closet, and he told Santana, he said, in order for you to get that phone, you got to go through me. In order to get that phone. Hit me, hit me. And so, Santana was like, you know, trying to push Michael out the way. Now, now Michael's son, stout. Okay, he like he, he can play football. He's a big boy, okay? There's no way Santana could have moved, you know, Michael Jr. 
And so Michael Jr. done hit him and let the games begin. All hell done broke loose. They done got the fight. So here is Michael. Now we can see Michael mad as hell. He is so upset. And he should be upset. Okay, he should be upset. These two boys are, you know, fussing and fighting. And he done threw the, you know, the $1,500 phone. Okay. But see, the way Rob, let's go back to him. The way he handled his stepkids, which they didn't fight each other. But Rob had his mother and wife fisticuffs. How he handled it was totally different than how Michael handled it. And in my opinion, I think it started out good. Okay, Michael? All right? And Michael said, you're grounded. Okay? You are grounded. You ain't gonna leave his house until you graduate high school. You're grounded. He was livid because here he is, stressed. You know, he had to get off of work. And then they fussing and fighting about nonsense. Did y'all see Justine's eyes when Michael turned around? Honey, Justine was sitting here like this. Now, what's he about to do? Michael, what you about to do? And honey, Michael said, I'm going to explode. And Michael punches, boom, a hole in the wall. I said, oh, Michael. Now, in my opinion, Michael, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do in front of your son and stepson when those two boys just got finished fighting. Maybe them seeing you punch a hole in the wall wasn't the best thing to do. Yes, sometimes you can't ha help it. You know, you're mad, you're stressed. But punching a hole in the wall with your two sons there, mm-mm. No. Nope, nope, nope. That shows anger. That shows, that is telling them that you're out of control. Sometimes you just got to walk out. Just walk out, get in your car and drive, walk around until you calm down. Because here, these two young men or boys are seeing their grown father so upset over what they have done that you don't punch the hole in the wall. You have shown them your anger. You have shown them you couldn't control yourself. And it happened in front of Justine. Mm, mm, mm. It could have been a better way of handling it, but child, you know what? They ain't my kids, child. I still got my cheap phone. But anyway, y'all, the episode was pretty daggone good. I didn't mind this episode. It was a good episode. What did y'all think of the episode? And y'all know what to do. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe and join the family. Why haven't you? Y'all remember, don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends.